Auction records shattered at Sotheby's Thursday with the $110.5 million sale of this painting by Jean-Michel Basquiat. Here with the details is WSJ Art Market reporter Kelly Crow. Kelly, hi. Wow. This right? was the highest price ever paid for a U.S. artist at auction, yeah. correct? Yeah, and, and the highest price ever paid for anything painted since 1980. So a lot of us were alive then, and now here we are. Amazing. Over the $100 million club. And yet a lot of people say, Basquiat, who's that? I've heard of Warhol, I've heard of Picasso. Mm -hmm. Who is this painter? Yeah, you got to start remembering this guy because your kids are going to love him. He's uh, Haitian, Puerto Rican. His parents were Haitian, Puerto Rican. He grew up in Brooklyn, just sort of typified sort of the Brooklyn kid, kind of was a street artist. Artist, started hanging around Soho right when the galleries started growing. So sort of right when the Wall Street boom started happening, people started going to galleries. And boy, those he people. He was right there in the right place. Those people who bought his paintings in the 80s. What, this painting was mm -hmm. sold for $19,000? Yeah, $19,000. Amazing. And then he had a tragic ending, no? Yeah, and that's the other thing, I think, is that he sort of was all this raw, pent-up energy. You know, he had dreadlocks. He sort of typified a lot of anger in New York that we didn't really see in art. And he kind of just spewed all this political and historical commentary. I mean, as as a black artist in New York, he was also pretty rare as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. And I think he just sort of earned a spot. He also um, ended up with the money, right, sort of spiraling out, um, got involved in drugs, and uh, ended up dying of an overdose at the age of 27. So young. Had this sort of genius died young, yes. missed opportunity thing, which adds, I think, to his mystique. Because And speaking of young, you know, the buyer is a 41-year-old e-commerce billionaire from Japan. Yeah. Correct? Tell yeah. us about him. Yusaku Mizu. Zawa is a trip. I like it. He uh, made his money in, he, he founded a sort of an online shop for clothes and this and that in the early 2000s and it's just taken off. Now and he has about three and a half billion and he's buying art. There he is with his Basquiat. He's, yeah, he's he so looks cute. pretty cool himself. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he has an art foundation. He's um, building a museum in his hometown of Chiba, which is just east of Tokyo. So he'll definitely be a Amazing. guy to watch. You Amazing. Know, a future Guggenheim, we'll see. Who knows? That's what he's trying to be. So does this put this painting or this painter on the level of a Picasso? I think so. I think people don't realize that there are fewer than a dozen artists who have ever sold for more than $100 million. So wow. at this point, you're talking about Picasso, mm -hmm. pictures of Marie Therese. You're talking about Edvard Munch's The Scream. You know, everybody yeah. knows that. You're talking about Andy Warhol's silver, uh, you know, silver yeah. car crash. I mean, there's just a very few handful of artists, um, all of them, you know, basically white guys. And so now here Basquiat breaks in. He's entering the stratosphere. The very yeah. cool. Now, all three big houses wrapped up their spring auctions. All three did very well. Post-war contemporary art sculpture had an interesting yeah. moment, correct? Yeah, I I think that collectors have bought a lot of wall power paintings in the last few years. And I think they're looking around and seeing empty patios and maybe empty coffee tables, and they're just sort of wanting to mix it up. And so the Brancusi, did really well. the Brancusi, what is it, Reclining Muse? Is that it's Sleeping Muse? Sleeping Muse. Muse. It's a little football shaped bronze. Beautiful, of a little there it is. Down, yeah, isn't gorgeous. That pretty? It's a little gem. Um, Brancusi made um, about six of these mm -hmm. um, based on a marble. The marble version is at the Hirshhorn. Um, a lot of other museums have these little bronzes. It and sold for $57.3 million. $57.3 yeah. million. That's not bad. Yeah. And then we can get to some other paintings that sold for over $50 million. The Cy yeah. Twombly. Yeah, Cy Twombly, um, Leda and the Swan, sort of this big scrawling um, abstract that sort of, you know, harkens to this mythological maiden who, you know, did the deed with Ab a swan. Right. That's how the <laughs> mythological things go. Um, it's sold for over 50. And uh, the Francis Bacon portrait of his lover also sold for over 50 million. Yeah, so we're kind of, we're in rarefied air where, where collectors are feeling more confident. You but know, what's going on, Kelly? Because when you look at the market in general, and I'm talking about not just the art market, but the stock market, things mm -hmm. are softening up. So mm -hmm. why is it that people still feel so confident pouring this amount of money into at least contemporary art? Yeah, it's fascinating because last year the art market had a really lousy year and people were fine with stocks. And this year the art market's sort of recovering and, and off to the races and other markets are not. Sometimes the art market just operates in its own rhythm and its own cycle. It's also a safe haven for art when other places to put it look mm -hmm, shaky. Mm -hmm. So if you are afraid of your stock yeah. values evaporating, like you put it into a painting, that painting isn't going to evaporate. Right. The values may change, but it's there. At least for post-war contemporary, correct? Yeah. When you look yeah. at the Impressionists, they don't seem yeah. to be speaking to buyers quite as much. Yeah, it's weird. It's hard to sometimes judge a market based on the catalogs because sometimes the mix is what it is, mm -hmm. you know? And in this round, for whatever reason, a lot of the Monet's, the Pissarro's, even the Degas were just sort of like selling for 
after maybe one or two bids. There was a $16 million Monet water lily. Right. At Sotheby's got a single bid. Now it sold for $16 million, but you're still just like, eh, you kind of want to see some competition. So either it just was considered, you know, a lot of these examples that have sort of survived or made it to auction at this season were sort of just... They're just not as hot. Tier. Surprisingly, yeah. though, even Jeff Koons, who's everybody's favorite artist, yeah. didn't do so well in the, this round of spring auction. Yeah, it's fun. He's got this huge ballerina, you know, uh, that's taken over Rockefeller Center. So he's having a good moment. And a lot of collectors have poured his stuff into sales just for whatever reason they didn't this time. So that'll be something I'll watch. Maybe it was the vacuum cleaners yeah. that didn't speak to this that. Is, well, this is an early, yeah, nobody wants to pay to clean, right? Yeah. <laughs> Who wants to pay to clean? But yeah. this was an early piece, and yeah. I thought actually it would do decently well. Um, right. And it came from the Spiegel collection. Right. The same family, actually. That owns enough, the Basquiat. That owns the Basquiat. Other side of the family, which is a whole other story. Story, but wow. um, yeah, but it just didn't, didn't, I mean, it, it sold, but it sold on a single bid. So again, not a lot of Fantastic reporting on the spring sales. Kelly Crow, thank you so much for being Thanks with us. Thanks for having me.